Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by one of my wonderful co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, but today we are very, very happy to be interviewing Michael Schmidt, the CTO of amaz.io, uh, uh, who has also worked on creating a Bitcoin miner water heater, uh, which is pretty badass, uh, I must say. Uh, so yeah, Michael, uh, welcome on. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Hello. Thank you for having me. Nice, guys. Hey, we're, we're super happy to have you here. And, and, and I guess the first question to kick off with is, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'd seen about uh, your Bitcoin miner water heater setup, uh, and I imagine that's probably most of what we're going to talk about today because it's pretty damn interesting, to say the least. Having said that, um, when I was checking out your profile a bit more, uh, obviously, like I saw about uh, the website and, and your role as CTO, like, what is it that you do? What is it that amaz.io is and what is it that you guys do? Because uh, I'd be interested to find out. So we just provide web hosting for companies and we specialize a bit on like very high quality, high performance things. So um, I have a team all over the world um, in Europe, the US, Australia, New Zealand that basically ensures that the customers and the servers are happy. And um, yeah, that's what we do. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. So web hosting side of things. And so like, did you, when it comes to things like Bitcoin or I guess crypto, um, did you, is that how you got in, like found out about Bitcoin through like finding out ways you can accept fun funding for different projects you're doing online or how did you find out about it? I've most, I've heard it in like 2011, very early. I grew up in Switzerland and um, there's a quite an active um, tech scene in Switzerland and I mostly heard it from the cryptographic side because people told me that there is a new project that allows you to basically solve the double spending problem. So how can you, in a digital realm, um, send something that cannot easily be copied? Because we all know, like you can copy a JPEG, you can copy text. So that was fascinating to me. And so that's why I looked at, funny enough, actually at that point, you couldn't buy any Bitcoin. The only way, way to actually play with this, you had to mine first. So like you had to install um, the Bitcoin core that also was the miner. Um, and today it's separate. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the way. And we just, we literally sent each other 100, 100 Bitcoins just for fun and um, for trying. And um, yeah, that was, that was where when I got in contact with it. And like I said, I was mostly interested in the cryptographic part. And at that point, nobody talked about that this could potentially be a money. I mean, some people did, but um, it was just a cool tech. And um, and then I looked a bit into deeper and I realized at that point, because there was no SegWit, there was no Lightning. I mean, that's super, super early. We, I saw that like you could have a max of um, maybe like six transactions a second. And even that, if you looked at the Visa network, like they did 6,000 a second or even more. And I was like, okay, that's never going to be possible. It's a cool tech, but it's never going to be able to actually take over anything. And so that's where I dismissed it. And um, I also had no idea about the monetary system. At that point, I was really into tech. Um, and yeah, and only over time, I got in contact with it again. I heard about Lightning and things like that. And then really during COVID time, um, when the money printing couldn't stop, I thought like, okay, no, that's, that's not how I learned to balance like your financials, like a private. So how, how can the same thing work for a government? And then I started looking deeper and realized, okay, it's all broken. And, um, and then I, I got back into Bitcoin and learned more and basically got orange peeled by all the kind of different podcasts that you find out there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess like so. Yeah, it's, it's that standard. It's that very like uh, well-known story. Although it sounds like you got involved a lot earlier than others, but it's that well-known story of like, oh, I heard about it, or I found out, or I even got slightly involved, and then it's like something made me think, eh, you know, probably not gonna. And then boom, you know, like years later, you realize the uh, errors of your ways. Which it, hey, I think uh, pretty much ninety-nine point nine percent of people who found out about it early have been through that. So it's uh, it's no worries. Um, I guess like the, the the big question here to to start us off. Um, oh, and I should say actually, our roaming reporter Jerry has arrived into the podcast. Uh, he came in a few minutes late, but uh, you know, uh, happy to have you here, Jerry. Um, uh, but yeah, sorry. So yeah, the, the 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 main thing that I've heard about and 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 the reason I know who you are <laughs> is because of the Bitcoin uh, mining water heater setup. Um, take us away with where this idea came from 
I, I want to hear it all, basically. Okay. So all right. let me know. All right, buckle up. Um, yeah, so like I said, for me, mining, I really started installing miners on computers. And at that point already, like, um, you always thought about, okay, how could you get the fastest miner um, or the best computer to mine? And so, um, but then when I dismissed it, like I've heard later on about A6 or like GPU second, and then people talked about A6, things like that. And I, I always knew how the mining part works, but I really didn't really care too much. And then when I came back into Bitcoin, really understanding for what it really is, what it, what it not only could, but I really believe will become, um, I looked deeper into the mining and saw all these ASICs that are super highly specialized. And I saw also the fans on them. And so I was like, okay, I'll get one. And literally I just like got one got it at home, plugged it in, and you get like by 95 decibel, like it, it sounds like a fighter chat that takes off. And so I was like, oh, okay, I guess like, let's figure out how to make this a bit less loud. And so I played a bit with, um, with putting on different fans and like uh, learning about all of this. And so at one point I actually had a system that I could reasonably work right next to it so i basically replaced it with like a really big squirrel fan which is just much bigger and um, but because it's bigger um it, it is less loud and so i just had this miner running in my garage and i just wanted to play a bit with mining and figuring out how all of this works and i got my first sets and i learned about the pools and i learned about miner software so i played around with like brains that you can like individually change the asic um speeds and things like that but really just like learning what i'm all about this is and then um end of last year uh, my wife and i we planned to do a trip for uh, six weeks in colorado and uh, with our airstream so we own an airstream trailer that we um pull around we used to live in it full time which was really cool um but since covid we're more stationary but we still go on these longer trips and one of the challenges we always have is to actually heat the airstream because it's just tiny insulated and uh, and the way you heat it normally is with propane but if it's really cold and i mean colorado gets like minus 20 degrees celsius and um, so it gets really really cold you basically burn through a propane tank almost a day or maybe you get to the second day so it's caught con you're constantly thinking about where do i find this propane because if we go out in the middle of the night, it's going to be like zero degrees in the morning. And um, so we, that was always like something. And so you're always checking like, okay, where can you buy this propane? And while I, we prepped for leaving, I was like, couldn't I just take the miner that heats my garage or my, my office? Couldn't I take that with us? And so I planned a bit and I basically said, okay, and I figured out that if I put it inside the box, that is like a bit of rainproof. It's not waterproof, but just the rain doesn't go into the box. And I basically take a vent like of a, of an, of a clothes dryer and pipe this into the airstream that it would heat up the air from the outside and pipe it into the airstream and heat up the airstream inside. And I was like, oh, okay, let's try it. Let's figure out, find a way how to pipe this into, um, the, into the existing uh, fan system of the airstream. And yeah, just... Literally, I, I think I finished like a day before we left. So I never slept in it. I never really tried it. But yeah, we just went on. And during the six weeks, it actually worked. Um, so we were able to heat the, the Airstream. And um, we're not completely though, because one S9, unfortunately, is not um, strong enough. And I only had one single one at that point. And so, yeah, but we were able to reduce like the propane usage by like half. Um, because basically during the day, the miner was perfectly fine. Just during the night, sometimes the propane then still kicked in uh, when it wasn't, wasn't warm enough. So I built the whole system. I built like a control system that still measured how, how hot it is. And if it was still too cold, then the, um, the, the regular propane heater still turned on. So that was really the first time that I started to look into how could I actually use this heat for more. And I put this on, on Twitter. And by the way, I have a picture of it. Let me shortly share this. So yeah, please do. Please do. We can look at this. Do you, do so you that's any, basically the whole system. Background? Do you have any background in like heating and stuff? Because no. if I try to do this, I blow up the airstream. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no. So Michael, yeah, so, yes. I had I had a quick question. Like, how how are you uh powering the miner? Like 
I, I've heard that like you need like an inverter, like if you're powering like appliances and stuff in a trailer like that. Yeah, so we mostly stay at some place where you actually have access to the normal power. Um, so this was like at an, uh, an RV park uh, where you have power. Some RV parks, they only have 110 volts. Luckily, the S9, you can run it also on 110. It's not going to be as efficient or as hot then. But um, um, in some cases, I actually found 220 volts. So um, that, was, um, that was good. And funny enough um, that you pay the, the RV parks, you just pay per day. And it doesn't matter how much energy you use. Um, so we basically heated the airstream for free. And I also got some sats back. Um, one of the one of the parks, I actually asked them if they want some of the Bitcoin back, but they, did, they didn't care at all. So um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that was basically the system. Um, so this was just, there is the S9 sits in there inside the box. There's the bigger fan, the squirrel fan. And um, yeah, this just, just piped the air into the airstream. And that was really the first time that I personally realized, hey, this could actually work. And I put it on Twitter and it exploded a little bit i would say like and people reached out and they were interested in it and people said like oh could you use this for something else and things like that and that's where really where the journey started off um thinking about how could i use the miner for more than just mining bitcoin and and the body became summer and i was like okay really heating a house is not gonna be necessary i live in the east coast in the u.s so like during the summer you you're cooling your houses and so, like, I, of course, immediately thought, oh, I'm just going to build the same for the house. But again, I don't need it. And so um, I looked a bit more and I saw other people online also talking about mining and heating waters. And so I started to research a bit more and I realized that these water heaters, A, are basically just a really big water kettle <laughs> that just heats up the, the, the water. If you use an electrical one, it's literally just a resistive heat. So um, it's not like any fancy heat pump system or at all that could be more efficient. Um, plus, it also uses a lot of energy. So in a normal household, the water heater is actually probably like 50% of your electrical bill is the, is the water heating piece. And so that was like the next thing. I was like, okay, how could I do this? And I knew I have heat from the miner and I want hit hot water. So I was like, okay, how could we combine this? But very fast it became clear to me that I can't put the miner into the water. Then I learned that much about physics that that doesn't play together. Um, and um, so I looked a bit deeper and I found a couple of people of talking about immersion cooling. And, um, and that was just before Bitcoin Miami 2020. So I went there and I saw all these huge industrial immersion systems like that have whole tanks that you can put like a 50 miners in it with huge fans and everything. And I was like, that doesn't sound too hard. Like, um, that, that should be a way to recreate this. And yeah, basically came home from Miami and started to play with it and um, figuring out, um, A, what type of liquid do you need? What type of plumbing? What should you think about? And I researched more into water heaters and I found a whole community of people that use uh, firewood stoves to heat their water. So it's, let's say you, you live in the woods and you have a lot of wood available. Um, a lot of people, they heat their house with their wood stoves, but also they use it also to heat the water. And so, and so there are all these people that um, build like heat exchangers and we can go in and how exactly it works later, but it's basically similar to using waste heat to heat the water. And I watched tons of YouTube videos about that. And yeah, went to Home Depot, got all the parts and just started building and learned a lot and showered myself in 140 degree water once because I forgot about water pressure and things like that. But no, it was really, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, today, um, I'm, as of today, we're basically heating the water heater since a couple of weeks. It's now purely heated by the miner. We've interviewed um, some mining companies like uh, Marathon and uh, they talk about how there's like going to be a merger of like utility companies um, beginning yeah. to mine. And then there's also like the, the stereotypical like Bitcoiner claim that every home will have an ASIC. 
Yes. Um, with your water heater, it kind of seems like that actually could become a viable future. What do you think about that? Totally. I mean, that's definitely after I've built it and I realized that this is actually viable. And um, I fully believe that in the future, we're going to have a miner at home or two um, to do this. And I think that's the most important thing that people need to understand. So let's say you have a water heater and the water heater usually is three to 4,000 watts of heating energy. Now, um, let's say you use um, 100 kilowatt hours per month to heat your water. It doesn't matter really, but um, let's, let's use 100 for a simple calculation. Now, this 1,000, uh, this 100 kilowatt hours can heat the water a specific amount. Now, if you replace this by a miner, it will, the miner will use also 100 kilowatt hours to heat the water the exact same amount. Because a miner, like any other computer, converts the energy 100% into heat. And that was one thing that I wasn't really aware of. So we always think like, oh, the computer is calculating something and that uses energy. And that's not true at all. The calculation generates heat and that's where all the energy goes. So if you have a computer, let's say that uses a thousand watts because it's a gaming computer, you basically have a thousand watt space heater in your room that heats the room all the time. And so because um, the heat is 100% converted into electricity and the water heater does exactly the same, the electrical coil in it, the electrical bill at the end of the month, if you have compare an electrical heater compared to a minor heater, it's going to be exactly the same. So I don't pay more electrical bill than if I would just have the water heater by itself. And that suddenly changes the calculation for so many people that say, oh, I, I've talked to people that are, they pay like 20 cents or 30 cents up to for the electricity. And for these people, it doesn't make sense to, to mine because Bitcoin, the price of the, the value of the Bitcoin you get back, at least if you compare it at the time when you mine it, you're going to lose money. But in my system, or if you use the heat for something else, you would spend this electricity anyway. The electricity could, could cost $100 per kilowatt hours. And because you would need this anyway, because you want to shower and you need hot water, um, the Bitcoin that you mine is basically free because the electricity you would have paid anywhere already. And that's, I think, what so many people are realizing now, that this changes the calculation completely. Now, of course, this means you can only mine when it's actually needed. And I think we can look later a bit into like um, how often it actually runs and stuff. So my miner doesn't run 24 hours a day, um, not at all. It only runs when it's needed. But if you run it only when it's needed, it's literally using the exact same amount of energy. And so my hope is actually that in the future, you will go and buy a water heater and it has a miner inside because it uses the exact same amount of energy. It creates the exact same amount of heat. So why would you not buy a miner based water heater? Um, and so I'm actually calling a normal water heater. That's just a very dumb miner. Or that's a miner that lost its pool or for, I don't know, like um, is, is unable to mine or mines the wrong coin. Um, so that's really like, yeah, no, I, for me right now, I do not see a reason why we would not, in the future, create all the heat we need in our houses with a miner. Take my money, just take it now. No, like when, <laughs> when are you, uh, when when are you gonna start doing this, man? Like when are you gonna turn oh. this into a commercial enterprise? That's what I want to know. I mean, I, the amount of people in my DMs like offering me actual money when I can fly out to install this, it's it's crazy. Um, to be very honest, like it was not the plan to build anything commercial. I'm just like a natural tinkerer myself. If I have an idea, I have to figure it out and build it. And um, now having built it, I definitely look at something and say like, okay, this could actually work. Um, there is actually a company in France that is building a product like that. Um, they're called Wise Mining. So they, they sell you a water heater. It has a Bitcoin miner right next to it and they do exactly what I've built. They're only selling to friends right now. So um, we'll see if we can maybe convince them. And, um, or I could totally see that, yes, maybe somebody starts something in the US. Right now, it's my plan is to open source as much as I can about the system. 
um, with findings, with knowledge. That's why I'm here to share about this and also tell people how it works. That somebody that isn't afraid or that knows a little bit about plumbing, that's mostly, it's mostly plumbing stuff, um, and maybe a little bit about mining, a little bit about electricity, that somebody could rebuild us themselves. And who knows, maybe we create an, a fleet of people that know how to install this and we're going to install it in all our neighborhoods. Like that's probably what I'm going to do. All my neighbors now suddenly are super interested in Bitcoin. <laughs> Go figure. Um, and so that could maybe be a system that we install something like that um, on the site. But I really want to say like right now, it's really a proof of concept. Um, it's not like a system that has been battle tested for years and years and years. But I know there are companies out there, which makes me very hopeful that maybe in a couple of years, maybe even in months, you can go and actually order something and a person installs it at your home. Mm -hmm.